between Tony Gwynn Drive and Trevor Hoffman Way. This is Petco Park. The World Series on MLB The Show coming up. It's the Baltimore Orioles and the San Diego Padres. John Chappie and Chris Singleton on the call. And Singy, there's been a lot to talk about already in this series as we head into game four. Well, the number one thing to discuss is just how lopsided this series has been. You know, you get to this point of the season, Boog, and you expect both teams to be on pretty even ground, but it's not played out that way at all. And when a team takes care of business with such dominance and gets out to a 3-0 lead, I just can't see this series lasting much longer. Yeah, that's usually the way it goes. But hey, coming back to win the series has been done before. And we'll be back for the first pitch right after this. Just about set to go now. Today's starting pitcher, you Darvish. What do you have on him, Chris? Well, he went the distance last time, came away with the W, and we'll see if he can continue that trend in this one. And into the box for Baltimore, Gunnar Henderson. He's someone who quickly made a splash at this level, Chris, a former rookie of the year. Swing and a foul back. That's out of play. Oh, one down. Lined in the left center, and that should be extra bases. Now he'll turn it for second. And it's a double to start the game. Everything came together for him. Anytime you can drive a ball into the gap the other way, it feels so good. And that's when you know you're right where you need to be at the plate. It's even better when it gets you extra bases. Gotta love looking in at your dugout and seeing your teammates fired up. Here's Adley Rutschman. Swing and a miss as he was late. All right, Boog. So I was scrolling through social media the other day, and a video of Adley popped up. It was a clip of him playing college football for Oregon State. How athletic is this guy? Ah, right, ground ball, and that's through the infield. Coming home. He will score, and the Orioles take the lead. one nothing. Comes through with the RBI. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Anthony Santander at the plate. And that one fouled off. Santander, 29 years old, and he was a second-round pick back in 2016. That one fouled off. I think it's huge that they were able to score right away. You're playing on the road. Stakes are high. Energy in the ballpark. And you help to quiet that down a little bit. Kicks and fires. Foul ball still 0-2. One on, nobody out. A run in here in game four of the World Let's Series. Go. Got it by him for the K. Ryan O'Hearn comes up to hit. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. Left hand batter waits. Pass ball for a strike. Going two. Going two. One run across in the frame so far here in game four. Now fly ball to right center. No trouble here. Picks it away for the out. And there's two down. That All right, let's take a look at the Orioles lineup now. All right, Singy, how about all the talent in this lineup? They're deep, first and foremost, but the way that they can manipulate their personnel for matchups and everything else, it's uh, very intelligent the way that they use their team. And I, I think it creates a little bit of a... Uh, uncertainty for opposing teams especially in a big game big series right hander kicks deals Ball. they've got him working a little harder in this first frame than he anticipated T 
two outs. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. But the RBI single pushes across a run. It's now 1-0. Here in San Diego, our starting pitcher in this one, Corbin Burns. What should we keep an eye on here? Well, last time out, thought it was going to be pretty good, but wasn't able to make it out of the second inning. A real shocker. So he's fresh, and having had an opportunity to look at that last start, I expect him to be a lot better in this one. Stepping in for San Diego, Jose Azucar. Azucar. And he deals. And that one is lifted in the air. Santander in pursuit. Brings it in. One up, one down. As we take a look at the Padres lineup. Already trailing by a run in this one. They'll be looking to get on the scoreboard early on as well. Well, it's just the one run, so not too big a hill to climb. But, yeah, if they can answer back in this inning or at least in the next couple, that'll maybe settle everyone into this ball game, and that includes their own starter on the mound. He makes the grab out number two. That is good. The second base. Here's Xander Bogart. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. That one is absolutely belted. It one hops off the wall. Should be extra bases. Bogart's into second. What is a hitter right there? Just a solid swing right there. Got it out front and lift it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. And it's scoring position with two away. Manny Machado up to the plate. In the air, center field. Under this one. And that is the third out of the inning. So they can't do anything with a two-out double. We'll move to the second now at Petco Park. It's the Orioles one and the Padres nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. Here's Ryan Mountcastle. Ryan Darvish back to work. Foul off down the right side. This park is absolutely electric for this game. Such a great postseason atmosphere. The wind of the pitch. Oh. Nothing like the drama you get in the postseason, boo. Love being a part of these games. Swings yeah. through that one for strike two. Thank right you. a one-two. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. The wind of the pitch. Swings through it and that's a strikeout. He had him out in front, which isn't easy to do against a hitter like this, known for using the entire field. Just couldn't sit back long enough on that one. Now it's Austin Hayes. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. Breaking right. ball through there for a strike. Well, here's an interesting stat on Darvish. He has more than 100 wins in his big league career. The only Japanese-born pitcher with more wins is Hideo Nomo, my former teammate. And that's him for a strike. Our umpire behind the plate, Jerry Hillsdale. High praise for Jerry when we talk to people around the game. Yeah, no doubt about it, Boog. He's very straightforward, very consistent back there. So most of the time, you're not even going to think about it. That's a good thing. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the frame, and that's now three in a row. Yeah, he's really settling in and getting a feel for his pitches, throwing them where he wants to right now. So we'll see how long he can keep this streak going. Jorge Mateo in the box with two gone, and takes a look at a called strike. A 
And that one sliced foul. On the ground to short. Oh, he can't hang on to the throw. Two outs, runner at first. And the batter now, Jordan Westberg. Bat to right. And that is that. One left for the Orioles, but they're on top, 1-0. And a pitch. In the air, fairly deep to right field. Drops into the glove. And a quick out number one. Batting. And now the catcher comes up to him. Luis Campusano. The part about Burns' journey that's so interesting, former fourth-round pick out of St. Mary's where he pitched alongside Tony Gonsolin, that's a hit. And the postseason success continues for him. Now batting jerks and pro far. But you go back and look at Corbin Burns in 2019. He threw 49 innings and had an 8.82 ERA. In the air, right field, pretty well struck. That one carrying. That's a And they grab the lead. It's 2-1. He ambushed him right there, Siggy. Yeah, swinging on that first pitch, and I think losing one over the fence is exactly what he had in mind as well. Extended, and that's exactly what he did right there. He don't typically want to pull a pitch in that part of the plate, but he doesn't allow his wrist to roll over, stays through the ball, gets the loft, and gets the home run. Now, here is Matthew Batten. Foul ball. Bases around first and hustling for second, and he's in with a stand up double. Jackson Merrill. The next up for the Padres. Right side, hard hit. And there's two away. So the lineup flips over. Next to hit, Jose Azokar. He's over for one. Shitting over. Two across on this San Diego homer. And this is now a 2-1 ball game. This is the World Series on the show. Back here at Petco Park. Here's the third baseman, Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar Henderson. As he turns on the rubber. And with that good live arm delivers. Now a pop-up on the infield. Machado calls it in, and there's one away. Well, that was a pitch you got to crush. Unbelievable that he missed it right there, and I'm telling you, he is going to be frustrated with himself until his next at bat. Adley Rutschman, the next to hit for the Orioles. Down the ball here, rolls foul. 
He's a bad ball hitter, so even if you get him to chase pitches outside the zone, he still might beat you. Not an easy out by any means. Stands in now and watches strike one. Two outs, bases empty. Foul ball there. Just the ball. off the outside, outside edge. Now one and two. a strikeout. One, two, three, go the Orioles. They're down two to one. Bottom of the inning. So digging in now for San Diego, Fernando Tatis Jr. And here it comes. Right side, Santander moving under it, and it's caught for the out. No bad, no bad. Two. Two. It's Xander Bogarts now, doubled his first time off. Lots of players perform better at home, and this batter is no exception. Might be the crowd or the familiar surroundings, but he's typically better in this environment. Swings and blasts one deep to left center. That one carrying. Ball. That's his fifth homer of the series. And they add a run. It's 3-1. on the first pitch of an at-bat. You watch it from the on-deck circle, so when you step in the box, you're ready to pull the trigger wherever it's at. Really good job by the hitter. Total conviction on that swing. Here's Manny Machado. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Swing and a hard hit liner up the middle of the base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Just so sound in his mechanics. It's against a firm front side. Front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Man at first with one gone. Next for the Padres, Hassan Kim. And there's a foul ball. Burns, multi-time all-star. He throws a cutter, a curb, a changeup, a slider, and he works in a sinker. Machado leads off first with one away. Out towards right center field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. Two down. Up next is the catcher. Louis. Luis Campusano, the next up for the Padres. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. In the air, out towards right center. Santander in pursuit. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. But the Padres add to the lead on a solo homer. And this is now a 3-1 ball game. You're watching the World Series on the show. You can't stop my shine. I'm just doing me, yeah. I'm going to take a pick for the motor seat. Catch me on the scene. The fourth game of the World Series. The first base so now the Orioles cleanup Ryan hitter, Ryan O'Hearn. Oh. The pitch. 
That yeah. one's in there. Strike one. O'Hearn goes six feet, three inches, 220 pounds, and they went out and made a trade for him last season. In the air, left field. Profar has a beat on it. Hauls it in, and there's one away. The bat. The center field. Okay, next for the Orioles, Cedric Mullins. Mullins. His first hit bat was a strikeout. On the ground, right side. And he takes it himself for the out. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Lets the defense the work behind him with another field. ground ball. That's Good execution. Ryan Two outs, base is empty. Now, Ryan Mountcastle went down on strikes his first time through. This is the time you have to pull out every trick in your bag. They know the season is over with the loss. <laughs> Things aren't looking great right now, but they're still in striking distance. They need to get something going real soon. And that one fouled off. Two down, nobody on. Ground ball up the middle. Bogarts fields it cleanly. Tosses the first. That's out number three. Nothing doing this time around for the O's. And they still trail it here, three to one. Bottom of the fourth, here's the left fielder, Jerickson Pro And a pitch. He's hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Well, Singy, he is oh, locked in oh, there. Oh. Well, he's oh, really oh, slowed oh, the game down, and it's oh, like oh, he's oh, moving in full speed, oh, and everybody oh, is a step or two behind. The way that he squared up that baseball tells me that he is seeing it like a beach ball. On the ground, a short could be two. Quick feed to second for one. And it will hurt. Two. Nice soft hands on the backhand right there in the six hole. Starts the double play. That's not an easy throw, but he puts it on the money. Really good job to get that double play started. Jackson Merrill, the next up for the Padres. Grounded out his first time. Lifted in the air right center field. Mullins settles under it. And makes the grab. And that is that. One hit in the inning, but nothing more than that. We're headed to the fifth. It's the Padres three and the Orioles one. Back here in San Diego, top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Austin Hayes. Darvish back to work. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Good. Over 80 percent of his first pitches are strikes. You're doing that. Could have a really good day out there in the mound. And a foul ball. Goes down. Look in. Sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. Jorge Mateo now, maybe expecting a bunt here. Third baseman playing in on the edge of the grass. A big swing and a miss. No ball, one strike. Base is empty one away, and we're at the top of the fifth. That's in there, and the count is 0-2. And two. Man, this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. And the swing it is. And he's two down. 
And Chris, that's a way to neutralize his speed by keeping him off base. And the defense breathes a sigh of relief because he puts pressure on everyone if he can put the ball in play. But that's how you do it. Keep him off balance, get him out of there, and deal with the next guy. So next to hit for Baltimore, Jordan Westberg. And first offering is fouled off. And a pitch. Out there to center. Merrill in position. And that is that. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. Challenge him with the fastball right in the heart of the zone, and he was clearly ready to jump all over it. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. So, man aboard, Fernando Tatis Jr., the next to hit. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. Xander Bogarts. He's already homered here in this one. No question about this one. It's out of here. They go back to back. His second home run of the game, and they add to their lead. It's 6-1. Zingy, he's been red hot. Yeah, another big swing of the bat for him. Man, he has really seen the ball well in this one. Special feeling at the ballpark, especially if it's your team that does it, and those guys get to slap hands on home plate. This is the kind of thing that can really fire up a ballpark. Now Machado up here, one for two. Lifted in the air, right field, and there's one down. The batter number seven. Shortstop. Now it's the shortstop, Ha Sung Kim. First offering is fouled off. Oh, 
balls hit pretty hard and sure had home run distance. But if you're the pitcher out there on the mound, you execute it. Just a long strike. You go after him and finish him off. Swing and a line drive and a base hit up the middle. And that extends the inning. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. That's it for Corbin Burns, and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break. Dean Kremer on the pitch here. Stubborn pretty early in the ball game, so this bullpen has some work to handle. Best case scenario might be if he can come in here and get several quick outs, kind of bridge the gap that starter left for him. Runner at first with two away. Jerks in pro far. Now at the plate. And there's a fly ball deep right field. Again, his second homer of the game. And they throw a pair on the board. It's 8-1. And their fifth home run of the game. Some things in this sport are contagious, Boog. And right now for this team, clearly it's the long ball. Welcome to the game. First pitch out of the bullpen. A tough one. You know he's just trying to get one in there for a strike. And on the other side is a hitter. It's a great time to be aggressive and let it fly. It's not what they were looking for when they turned to him, but now he's got to find a way to reset. Here's a sling and a drive left field, and he knew it. Another one. Back-to-back -back homers. And they tack one on the board. It's 9-1. No pressure on the next guy, but that's back-to-back -back home runs. How many are they going to hit? intact long enough to get to the ball and through it and it went a long way base is empty with two away and now the center fielder Jackson Merrill crushed to right this one's got a chance out of here home run and they add a run it's 10-1 He's swinging a red hot bat. This isn't the first home run we've seen him hit these last few games, and it probably won't be the last. Back to back to back home runs, and these guys look so dominant right now. Pitcher might want to check and see if he's tipping his pitches or not. But I tell you what, this was basketball. That opposing team would call a timeout to try to slow down this offense. So a new arm out of the bullpen for the Orioles, Tyler Wells. He's into the game with the bases at him. Next is the speedy first baseman, Jose Azokar. One for three. On the ground to third. Out, and thank goodness the inning is at last over. The final damage here, they bat around. Ten come to the plate, seven runs on the board. Five innings complete. It's the Padres 10 and the Orioles 1. Now into the game, Jake Cronenworth. He takes over as the new first baseman. Number nine. So back to the top of the Orioles lineup. Gunnar Henderson getting ready to hit. Number two, Gunnar Henderson. Yeah, the right hander back to work. That one ripped. And gone. He flexes his power with that swing. It's 10 to 2. Just an excellent swing all the way around, and it had that sound coming off the bat that gets everyone's attention. Got a pitch to drive, short to the baseball, squared it up, and the backspin carried it out of here. Now 
Now the number two hitter, Adley Rutschman. One for two. He had an RBI base hit back in the first. Fly ball, pretty well struck right field. That's got a chance. And that one is gone. He shoots one out to right. It's 10-3. He wasted no time in that at bat, swinging at the first pitch, and he punished it. Well, he almost robbed the home run right there, and I tell you what, he'd love another crack at it. During batting practice, you always like to work on that, and so close, but that one was just out of his reach. And into the box for Baltimore, Anthony Santander. Hard ground ball base now. Now, no waiting around right there. He was ready to swing it on the first pitch. Pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield and. Even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. Next to hit, now a swing, and O'Hearn sends this one high in the air and deep to right field. That one back there, bangs off the wall. Throw comes in, runner stop, second and third, nobody out. He was all over that one. Now, a lot of times in today's game, right fielders are able to get to a ball that stays in like that, but he hit that one pretty well. And if he hits it just a little bit different on the barrel, it's out of here easily. But there's nothing wrong with the extra bases right there. Could be a chance here for them to start clawing back into this ballgame. Cedric Mullins, the next to hit for the Orioles. That's a bullet, but it goes foul. Righty to the plate. There's a swing and a drive. That's long gone. A three-run homer. Their third home run of the inning. And they cut into the deficit. It's 10-6. Things might get pretty interesting if they keep connecting on pitches like that. Let's take another look at it, but this time with the help of StatCast. Well, this one wasn't hit that high, but when you can launch it at 111 miles per hour off the bat and get some backspin, it'll carry enough to get out of here. Here's the designated hitter for... For the Orioles, Ryan Mountcastle. In there at the knees, going along. Can be tough to bounce back after a big home run, but nobody on, nobody out. You just have to treat it as a fresh inning. The Padres leading by four, and we're at the top half of the sixth. Next right. offering in there for a strike. That is strike two. Oh, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes, even a good pitch early in the at bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0-2 count. Swings and misses. And that's the first out. Nice recovery after giving up the homer. Way out in front of that inside pitch there. Just exactly the opposite kind of approach that you want with two strikes. You want to let the ball travel. Make sure you recognize it. Try to shorten up so that you can at least put the ball in play. Clearly fooled, but that's I think even more so, you question the two-strike approach. Hayes, the next to hit, takes ball one. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. That oh, one missed. You know, the first manager to ever win a game here at Petco Park was Tony Gwynn. Yes, Tony Gwynn. They had a college baseball tournament here in March 2004, yeah. and Tony managed San Diego State to a win. Still only one out here in the inning. High fly ball, shallow right field. Tatis drifts towards it and puts the squeeze on that one. And there are two down. The bat, bat number three. Two Jorge. outs, base is empty. Jorge, Jorge Mateo Jorge. will hit next. Dives 
and he can't hang on. That leaves him without a throw, and they don't get the out. And now, Jordan Westberg. Darvis checks on the runner, oh, he's and he's back in easily. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on ah. that pitch. Throw, save! No one won. See, the best way to catch this player might be on replay. Yeah, and sometimes it's the only way to catch her, Boog. I mean, you see that sprint speed on StatCast right there. It's elite, and just makes it very tough on the defense. A lot of pressure on those guys. Swing and a ball driven pretty well out towards left center. Merrill tracks it down for the out. <laughs> And welcome back to the ballpark. And now the right fielder, Fernando Tatis Jr. And a pitch. And first offering is fouled off. Well, Siggy, this is a guy that grew up in big league clubhouses, and it's something that you see throughout the game. Sons, whose father has also played the majors. Into the outfield base hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Seems like he got exactly what he was looking for. Right there. Smash that one through the infield for the knock. When it's hit that hard, it makes it very tough on the infielders to make any sort of play. And here comes Sander Bogarts. He's got a couple homers already, so can he possibly do it again? Come on, man. Of course he can. Those two he hit were legit. And he looks pretty locked in right now if he did. And he swings and lifts one to deep center field. And caught on the warning track. Third baseman, number 13. And now it's Manny Machado. Singing, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares it. Swing, and this one's blasted. It's got a chance. Pulls it in on the warning track. Man at first. Now okay, now the shortstop, Ha Sung Kim. 0 for 3 with three flyouts. And first offering is fouled off. He might want to steal second in this spot, but he's dealing with a catcher that has one of the best pop times in the game. He needs to pick his spot very wisely. This looks like extra bases. Tatis, round second on his way to third. Coming home. He scores, and the lead is up to five. Well done. Drives in the run. Everyone's trying to elevate the ball in today's game, but if you can hit a ball that hard on the ground, it's going to find some holes. So two down. Next, it's the catcher for the Padres, Luis Campusano. On the ground to third, and it finds its way through for a hit. Around third, he'll score easily. It's 12-6. Well, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. Turned on it nicely. Definitely a little out in front of the pitch, but he didn't hook around it too much and was able to keep it fair down the line. Jerickson Profar, the next up for the Padres. Three for three with a pair of home runs and a single. A sliding stop. And they get the out. 
They get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left. Game four heads to the seventh inning now. It's the Padres 12 and the Orioles 6. Top of inning number seven, down the third baseman, Gunnar Henderson. The line to kick the pitch. That's in there, 1 1. He swings and fouls one off. Kicks and deals. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Left hand hitter waits. Swings and misses. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Just a mid 90s challenge fastball right there. Not much to it. And I'm sure he'd love another swing at it because it was in a very hittable location. Those are the swings where you can sometimes start to question yourself as a hitter and say, how did I miss that? But you know what happens? And it's fouled away. The Padres up big in this one late here in game four. Where'd that last pitch miss? Now there's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if he can mix that in whenever he wants. One down, base is empty. On the ground to third. Zips it across. And two away to start the seven. Now that out. The right field. Anthony Santander. Two outs, base is empty. And next for the Orioles, Anthony Santander. And first offering is fouled off. The pitch. And that's in for a strike. Two down, nobody on. Here in the top half of inning number seven. Battling here as he fouls it away. Fly ball down the line. This has got a chance, and it is foul. And the righty deals. And a swing and miss, and that's that. Orioles held in check there. Deficit holds steady at 12 6. Back here at Petco Park, set for the last Rangers. half of the seventh. The and now the DH, Matthew Batten. The right hander back to work. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. That one's back there. And out of here. Touch them all. His second home run of the game, and they boost their lead. It's 13 6. With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Coming on for the Orioles, CNL Perez. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Stepping in for San Diego, Jackson Merrill. He's already homered in this game. To the right side, Westberg. Gathers and throws to first. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. No, 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 no. So up next, Jake Cronenworth. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone 
Oh, now this one's high and deep. Way back there. On its way. Gone. A gigantic blast. It's their second home run of the inning, and they add on. It's 14-6. That one just sounded different. Man, yeah, might have been the loudest moment yet. Man, my ears are ringing. I can feel that swing from the booth. That's exactly the pitch he was looking for. Crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. is empty one away. Now it's going to be Fernando Tatis Jr. And there's a strike. Good heater at 98. Two runs across in the inning. Here at the bottom of the seventh. And that one hammered. That's carrying Back goal. They do it again. Back-to-back -back homers. He's done it again. His second homer of the game. It's 15-6. swing on that one and everything was on time took a direct line to the ball excellent extension and just drove it out of here pitching change here Brian Baker now Xander Bogarts gets a chance to hit Swing and a miss. That's strike one. Oh, one. Baker, in his second season, he features a four-seam fastball, a cutter, and he works in a changeup. One out, base is empty. This one drilled to left. No doubt about it as they add on more. And he's gone yard again. That's his third home run of the game. And they tack on to their lead. It's 16 to 6. Two pitches, two swings, that one for a home run. Looking to be aggressive all the way, and it paid off for him in a big way. This one absolutely screamed out of here, Singy. A late shot. Snapcast tells us it was 112 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah, it left in a real hurry and didn't go that far because of the launch angle being a little flatter, but clearly it had all the velocity it needed to leave the yard. Here's Machado. That one out to right. Has this one sized up? And he makes the catch. That's out number two. The batter number seven. Shortstop. And now, Hassan Kim. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. And first offering is fouled off. And you played behind guys, and they loved having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. In the air to left center, Mullins on his horse. Brings it in with a nice running grab. And that ends the inning. Four runs on four hits, all of them solo homers. Eighth inning coming up. Padres lead it 16 to 6. We're at the top of the eighth, and here's the first baseman, Ryan O'Hearn. Ryan O'Hearn. Darvish back to work. And first offering is fouled off.
And the right hander deals. Popped in the air. Left field. And that'll fall for a base hit. A couple of hits in a row for him here. That pretty much split now, now, the zone down the middle, the and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. Now fly ball to right center. Merrill makes the grab. One pitch and one out. Now, now, now. So, man aboard. So, next to hit for Baltimore, Ryan Mountcastle. Struck out on just three pitches last time. And first offering is fouled off. Righty delivers. In the air, out towards left center. Profar settles under it. Makes the grab. Two away down. Now that left, left field. Austin Hayes. Now the left fielder, Austin Hayes. Splits the plate, and it's 0-1. O'Hearn, the runner at first with two gone. Bounce to the left side, handled by Machado. In plenty of time at first, and that is the inning. Back here in San Diego, and here's the catcher, Luis Campusano. Luis Campusano. pitch that's in for a strike I got to call an ODS game four here in 2022 at Petco Park where the Padres knocked out their rivals the LA ah. Dodgers the place was just nuts the entire game terrific fan support at the belt and fires got him looking and he did not like the call well, I think that's a case of overthinking right there. He got three straight fastballs looking in the 0-2 count just to pour it back. That's a laser base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Hung up in a rundown now, and they put the tag on him for the out. Now the DH for the Padres, Matthew Batten. Fastball for a strike. And a foul ball. Right through there. Got him. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. All set to start the ninth in this one. And into the box for Baltimore, Jorge Mateo. Right. Late with the swing there. I mean, his Your pitch efficiency, right. ability to get ahead in the count, at times pitch to contact, let the defense work behind him. That's why he's still in the game here in the ninth inning. Right-hander kicks, deals. Gets a piece and stays alive. Kicks and fires. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. You just don't see it that much anymore. A guy being this efficient and getting this deep into the game. I wonder if he's going to be able to close it out. It's just something about that ninth inning. But being at under 100 pitches, he's still got plenty of fuel left in the tank. Kim on the Bogarts. How about that double play? Got what he was looking for on the mound right there, and his infielders took care of business. Pretty textbook execution between short and second to turn that into two outs. Hit to right, and that should do it.
this was an incredibly special team all season long. And what I love most is that these home fans that supported this team game came out 